Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome to a, eh, you know, a pretty cool tutorial. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests to do this tutorial, and so I don't really think this counts as a tutorial, but you guys asked for it, so, you know, I'm taking a week off after I publish this. Um, okay, so we released a, uh, you know, great new product uh, called ProScores, and uh, there's this uh, promo video that we put together. And in the beginning, we have this little uh, little thing. Um, people have been calling it the spinny thing. Um, I named it the spinamajig. You guys can call it whatever you want, but bottom line is uh, people have been asking about it, so we'll take care of it right now. Here's what we're creating. All right. Um, pretty easy. Uh, we're going to create a new composition, and we'll do widescreen square at 24 frames per second and uh, maybe we'll make it 800 frames long and choose OK and uh, we'll create a new solid this is advanced stuff here and uh, we'll choose OK we'll do effect noise fractal noise and we create some cool stuff we're gonna change the type to dynamic and it kind of looks like uh, bubbly and uh, that's good and uh, we'll just turn the contrast up a bit the brightness down and then we'll take the ellipse tool and uh, we just want to create a good ellipse and then hit F and we're gonna feather the mask now we might get a weird edge so we want to change this to none and that way the background layer doesn't get blended so like if this were a different color say like red and this is set to normal we can see a fringe and I'll change that to none I had to use one of those stress balls to figure that out it's so stressful okay so we have the basic part of this uh, spin thing and uh, we also want to go ahead and make a black solid background and uh, maybe bring the mask expansion in just a little bit and uh, we want to animate the evolution so we keyframe the evolution here or just alt click and do time times 250 and that takes the current time, multiplies it by 250, and as we go forward, it animates. And that way we get a little bit of that, uh, you know, smooth animation um, in that little spin thing. Now, to make this uh, look cool, we need to make multiple layers. So we'll duplicate it, hit U, change the time to, you know, negative 250, and, uh, you know, plus 500, and that way it creates a different phase and we'll change the transfer mode to screen now we'll focus on the second copy right now we'll invert it and so it kinda creates a different look and we'll turn the contrast up and bring the brightness down and the scale bring the scale down and uh, we'll tint it like a red color you know you can tint it pretty much any color you want this is sort of an accent color and so that you have just a little bit of variation now on this one we can bring the brightness down you know till we like it and maybe the contrast up and uh, that looks pretty good then we'll create an adjustment layer and we'll choose effect blur CC radial blur now if you don't have this which you should it's on your After Effects install um, if not you can use the radial blur and uh, this one works okay it just kind of spins the image out and uh, you're probably thinking there was some magic trick but it's just this little filter and uh, the reason I don't use the radial blur is because it looks a little noisy even if you set it to high quality and uh, I like to use the radial blur turn that up scratch by the way is uh, the same as spin quality here you can you know change that and get some different uh, stuff so looking at that closely can look uh, 
pretty interesting. And then we add a brightness contrast on top of it, or a curves adjustment in that case, and we can give it a little bit more of a harsher look. And if we play around with the scale of the fractal noise, you can add more or less detail into the spin object. So we'll just do a quick preview of a Okay, uh, that is the key. Now, we'll take this uh, comp3, we'll call it uh, spin thing, orb, and uh, we'll drop it into a new comp. Uh, look at that. We'll go ahead and create a background color in here, black's fine. And we'll change the transfer mode, F4, to screen. And we'll make it a 3D layer, F4, and we turn that on. We'll take the text tool, we'll type a video copilot, or you could put your own favorite website in there, um, although I assume it will be video copilot. Just lie to me. All right, now we have this orb, we'll put it on top and we'll duplicate it and we'll move it forward and then rotate it and maybe offset the time and then duplicate it once more and move it forward and offset the time. Then we'll create a camera. And what's cool now is we can sort of fly through these layers. Now I'm thinking they're a little bit spread out so let's just get them a little closer together. And we'll reset the camera and we'll go ahead hit P and A set a keyframe for the camera position and then move forward and push in and then once we get there say here go forward a little bit further and move the camera in just a little bit and so this way we travel far quickly and then when we get there we just sort of move you know we dolly forward just a little bit now here's a cool way you can get this animation to be smooth so in the middle of this very basic tutorial I'm also going to show you one good tip if you right click on these and choose keyframe assistant uh, let's see a little bit off screen right click keyframe assistant change it to easy ease in and that way it fades into that and linearly animates forward. So if you look at the keyframe, we smooth and then it plays forward. So we'll go and play that back and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, you know, play around with the, uh, the animation, but uh, not too bad. Now, uh, to give it more specific coloring, what you can do is go into the comp here, click on the adjustment layer, and you know add a curves adjustment. Maybe turn the blue channel up, green channel down a bit. And in the final comp, you'll see just some different variations. Also, you can see when it gets too close to the camera, it gets a little blocky. So if you turn on the depth of field, which it seems to be on, and just turn it up just a small amount, that way when it gets close to the camera it will uh, it will fade away. And uh, you know, with just a little bit of work, you can uh, create uh, something like this. And so here I just have, you know, a lot more detail and more contrast on the on the orb or the spin thing whatever we're calling it so we just turn up the contrast and turn the scale down and maybe you know turn the the spin amount up some and so it's a little bit more sparse and you know anyway you can check out my settings uh, if you download the project file and uh, if you're really looking to jazz it up, just uh, take the back copy and duplicate it. And then you have two 
Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net. I will see you next time.